capital city of Egypt is Cairo. Here it is right here. It's a large, large, large city. Uh, most of the people in Egypt live near Cairo, if not in Cairo. But outside of Cairo, you have the pyramids there. Uh, south of Egypt is Sudan. Sudan is home to the Blue and the White Nile, which come together right here at the capital city of Khartoum. Uh, in, western, in the western part of Sudan is a region called Darfur. Darfur was recently discovered to have oil, and so the Sudanese government went out there to try to get people off that land so they could sell the oil underneath it to uh, oil companies. The people wouldn't move, so they started a war with their own people. We'll get to that in a second. Um, they actually supported Iraq in the Gulf War, and they've just become, just starting to become oil rich. They've realized that oil is money. Uh, Southern Sudan has actually gained its independence in July of 2011, so Sudan is about two-thirds of what it used to be. It's lost the bottom third of its country. Uh, there's Darfur right there. You have rebel forces in Darfur of the African race. These are black people who live in Darfur. Now, they're still Muslims, but they live in this region. They're called the Fur, the people are. The government of Sudan is Arab, so they're brown as opposed to being black, even though they're both of the same religion. The Sudanese government has hired these Arab fighters called Jangaweed, which are uh, like militias, to go to Darfur to kill or to persuade the people to leave from Darfur. Um, so the Jangaweed is this separate group away from the Sudanese army. And the Sudanese army goes in to, quote-unquote, keep the peace, but they're not doing a very good job because they're allowing the Jangaweed to come in, ride on horses, and slaughter um, these, the people, the fur, the Sudanese people that live in Darfur. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of the fur are leaving from um, Darfur. They're moving to Chad or the Central African Republic. Estimates, we really don't know true estimates because we've only just found out in the past three or four years the extent of the brutality that Sudan is doing. Probably half a million people are dead. Uh, the UN is trying to put pressure on their government and they've actually issued a warrant for, or the, the International Criminal Court, I'm sorry, has issued a warrant for Omar Bashir, the president of Sudan for his arrest for crimes against humanity. Of course, if he doesn't come to one of the countries that agree to this international court, then he's free to travel there. And that's, that's what it looks like. It's very dry out there, but people are being killed. And it's a very sad state of affairs. Now we're moving from northern Africa to the Middle East, the Near East, Southwest Asia. Turkey. Turkey wants to be in the EU... Uh, let's go back one. Turkey's right here. And Turkey has two parts to it. One part in Egypt, uh, Egypt, sorry, Europe. I saw Egypt down here. One part in Europe and one part in Asia. So it's one of the few countries that is part of two different continents, which is kind of intriguing. Um, but it wants to be part of the European Union, but most of the country is in Asia. It's also known as Asia Minor. It's where it gives Asia its name because the the major section of Turkey was known as Asia Minor. There are a lot of people that leave Turkey and go work in Europe, kind of like we have Mexicans that come to the U.S. or Guatemalans or whoever else. A lot of Turkish people move to Europe to work. They're very liberal and very secular. They have a very strong separation of religion and government. But they also suffer from earthquakes a whole lot. There are a lot of earthquakes that occur in Turkey. I thought this was funny. Uh, Hagia Sophia is this big, huge mosque in Istanbul, the largest city in Turkey. Uh, and this is the Bosphorus Straits. This is the body of water that separates Europe from Asia. But it's also a very important shipping canal into Russia. We have Lebanon, which has multiple religions, particularly Christians and Muslims. It's closely tied to Palestine, but it's been going through a civil war. The capital city is Beirut in 1984. A lot of American Marines were killed in an assault on the American forces in Lebanon. Now we get to Israel. Israel is one of the most hotly debated issues in the world today. 
The problem happened is that after the Holocaust, and after World War II, the United Nations decided we were, they were going to establish Israel as a country. Before this time, Israel was not a country, and the Jewish people lived all over the world. But the United Nations said, we're going to establish a country, Israel, for all these Jews, because so many of them died in the Holocaust, they deserve their own homeland. So we're going to allow them to move back to this area. The problem is, is that they didn't set really definitive boundaries and say the Jews can live here but not there. And so Jews moved back to the Levant and some of them bought land from Palestinians. But some of the Palestinians that already were there, it wasn't like this land was vacant. There were Palestinians living there. The Palestinians were like, well, we don't want to move. This is our land. We've been living here for years. So the UN approved the move, expanded the land, but they did not set definitive boundaries and say Jews can live here, Palestinians can live there. So now you have Jews and Palestinians living together, which the Palestinians are Arab, by the way, live together in this one country, but it has a difficulty trying to figure out who runs it, how it's possessed, um, different problems with Israel. Uh, Israel faced hatred from the Muslims over the, their religion and of the land itself. And the struggles also led to struggles of land and water rights. Because this area is dry. I mean, look right there how dry it is. So they had fights over water rights. So Israel started this war back in 1967 called the Six Days War. And in six days, they basically swung and did a KO knockout punch of all its neighbors. It hit Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and um, Egypt with one really quick swing in six days uh, to establish Israel to its boundaries that it's at today. There's a lot of high technology. They have a lot of steel. They're very advanced in Israel. They have Internet. They have all the things that Americans would want. They have McDonald's. They have a McShwarma Deluxe at McDonald's if you want to go to McDonald's. And Israel has a huge army because they require their men to, to give time, uh, I believe it's two years' time, to the Israeli army. I had some friends that actually went to Israel. So this is what it looks like. This is Israel. It's very dry. You can see you know, there's rocks and outcroppings and such. Uh, this is Jerusalem in the background. There's the Dome of the Rock, which is the, one of the holy sites of Islam. And along the side of it is the Wailing or Western Wall, which was part of the great temple of Judaism. There's my friend Kenny. Um, there it is, the Dome of the Rock. The Wailing Wall is right here, or the Western Wall as it's known. So you have two faiths right here, bang, bang, right beside each other. Um, there's an ancient tomb. This is the Dead Sea, and the Dead Sea is found in southern Israel, it is a very salty sea. Nothing lives in it because it's so salty. And you can just walk out there and float in it because there's so much salt. I wouldn't suggest doing that because the city of Jericho's sewage pumps directly into the Dead Sea. Yeah, kind of nasty. But um, that's what the Dead Sea looks like. And then there's Palestine, which is a piece of Israel. It's not a piece of Israel. It depends on how you want to call it. Uh, there are a couple of groups here, a couple of political parties that rule Palestine. Uh, Hamas and Fatah. Uh, the leader of Palestine is Mahmoud Abbas. A lot of people move from here. The refugees that move to Syria or Jordan. And Hezbollah is kind of a terrorist group or people's army of Palestine. It depends on how you look at it. The major issue, just to put it all in a nutshell, is Israel was a country or a group of people until 74 AD when the Romans split them up and moved them out from that region. When they moved them away from that region, the land was up for grabs. And so these Palestinians moved in and took the land. And then they owned it for 2,000 years almost before the United Nations steps in and goes, okay, Israel, take your land back, but don't start a war. But they didn't set boundaries. And so it became very difficult for people to get along with each other when there's no boundaries. If you don't know where your boundary is with your neighbor, it's hard for you to get along with your neighbor and you're trying to set up a fence or some marker to demarcate between you and them. And so that's the problem with Israel and Palestine today.